Hey everybody, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. This is the Coding Zoo Java playlist. In today's lesson, we are going to cover uh, where you would actually uh, store or create your code. What are the structures called for grouping your code together in Java? If that's new to you, uh, definitely stick around. We're going to jump right in. Okay, so hey, on my desktop here, I've got a project we created in previous lessons. It's just a, a project inside of Eclipse, inside of Spring Tools version of Eclipse. The project is called Java Coding Lessons. And in this project, I have the source folders, source main Java, source main resource, uh, source test Java, source test resources. Um, so these are called source folders. So if you're not familiar with creating a project or source folders, definitely check out our previous video. We show you actually how to create this project. So these source folders are actually where I'd put my code. So how would I group my code in these source folders? Well, the first thing you need to learn to do is to create packages. So packages are just think of like a, a folder system, like in Windows or one of your operating systems, right? Or think of it like a, a, um, a drawer in a dresser, right? So a package or f is the same as a folder like on Windows, or it's like a little drawer in a dresser, right? You want to put certain things in certain drawers on a dresser. So if you had a dresser and it had five drawers, you'd probably have one drawer that's for socks and one drawer might be for shirts, something like that. You get the idea. So that's the same for packages. Packages are just a way of grouping things, grouping your code in Java. So um, a package is usually one-to-one -one with a folder on your source system on, on Windows, if you're using Windows or Mac, so forth. So if you look at this right here, I have com. Now that's one package, com, the coding zoo dot lessons. So every word in between the dot is considered a package. So com is the main package, the coding zoo is a sub package, and then I've got lessons, that's a, another sub package of the coding zoo. So, I'm, so for these lessons, I may create code that fits into two different categories. Well, they're, they're, the code is, they're, they're, they're grouped as lessons, but two types of lessons. So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to create another package. I'm going to create a sub package of lessons. So I'm going to do right click and choose new, and I'm going to choose package, and I'm going to type in a sub package of basic. So we're going to have basic lessons, click finish. Now I have a sub package called basic under the package lessons. I'm going to create another package, new package, and I'm going to create a sub package called advanced. So now I have two packages under the package lessons. I have advanced and I have basic. Now when I get ready to put some code in this basic package. Well, how would I do that? Well, my code is usually going to have uh, data. It's going to have behavior around that data. So in Java, you would usually put the code, the behavior, and the data, the properties, into what's called a class. Now, a class is basically a template um, that where your code exists that represents your properties, your data, and represents your behavior in your program and that code exists in a class and that class is a template for creating objects in memory now we're going to get into object-oriented programming later and what that means what objects are now that's for another lesson but just know you group your code into classes and those classes usually represent something so in this case i'm going to create a class that represents a lesson we're going to do next which is on primitive variables so I'm going to create a class and call it primitive variables. So this class, primitive variables, well, that's kind of the some of the basics of, of Java, learning how to create primitive variables. So I'm going to put it into the basic package. So I'm going to put code in this class, uh, primitive variables, and that code is going to show you how to use primitive variables and that primitive variables is a basic lesson. So I'm going to put this class in a package called basic. 
So you see how we're kind of grouping things there into like uh, things that have meaning, has context. Now, in, previously, in other languages, you didn't have classes. You had basically data structures and you had procedures and they were kept in separate places and the, the certain procedures may work on certain data structures and, and they weren't really grouped together. Now, you could either have data and it could be like an array of properties. It could be some kind of data structure. Or you had, and you had procedures or you had functions. Now, functions are a little bit different than procedures. We won't go into that here. But just keep in mind, we're not using procedures or functions. And we aren't keeping the data separate from those things. We're going to put them into what's called a class. And that's kind of basically grouping like data with like uh, procedures, with like behavior. So I've got the primitives, variables, class. I'm going to write code methods in this class. Method is behavior of your class um, that will demonstrate how to create primitive variables. So now my class primitives variables may have methods in the future on it to demonstrate what primitive variables are, but it also might have properties that describe those different type of variables too. And we'll get into more of that later, but just to keep in mind a class has properties and it has methods. And we'll get into that in, in the next lesson. So let's very quickly go back over that again. Make sure you have it down. So the Java code structure has classes. So one class could be used to represent, for example, um, maybe I want to represent animals. Maybe I want to represent a lion. So I have a class. It's a template. And that template uh, represents a lion. That class represents a lion. And it has properties like color. And it has behavior like run. So I'd have a method called run, and I have properties on the class called lion. So these classes, now I may have other classes. Maybe I have a wolf class. Let's say I'm creating a system to represent animals, right? And that wolf would also have color. It may have other properties that a lion doesn't have. And it may also have the behavior run. It may also have the behavior of howl. Of course, a lion wouldn't have uh, a behavior of howling, right? A uh, lion would have the behavior of roaring. So different classes. Now I could later on represent different types of wolves with this one class because this one class is a template for creating objects. So I could have a white wolf, a black wolf, and I could create different objects in memory in my program from this class. Now we'll get into that later. Don't, don't worry about trying to understand all that right now. We'll get into that later on. So just know your code, methods, and properties are stored in classes. And also, there's what's called interfaces. We won't go over that now, but there, there's classes and interfaces. Interfaces basically just represent the signature, the methods that belong to a given class or a set of classes. Uh, for example, here I have an interface called land animal. Land animals have the behavior of run. And since both of these are land animals, they implement the interface run. Don't worry about that. We'll get into that in the object-oriented programming lesson. We'll go over interfaces and what's called polymorphism uh, and all that good stuff in later videos. Just know that it's classes and interfaces. So those classes are stored into sub-packages or packages. I have one here that's called canines. It's under zoo. I've got the wolf there. I've got another package called cats. I've got the lion underneath there. And I've got uh, cats underneath zoo. So when we have a zoo with sub packages of canines and cats and the classes are in their appropriate um, packages. So that's how you group things together. That's how you group code in Java. You have source folders that have packages and those packages have sub packages or classes. And sometimes you have interfaces you're using too. So that's it. Pretty simple. That's all there is for grouping your code in Java. You want to do so in an object-oriented fashion, and we'll cover more of that uh, as we get into object-oriented lessons later on in this playlist. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you didn't, hey, drop me a message below. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'll get back to you. My goal to coding is to help others like yourself learn how to program. Java is a fun language. I think you're going to enjoy it. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you dislike it, sure, go ahead and click dislike. Let me know how we can improve. Leave me a message on why you didn't like it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet and would like to see more videos, click the subscribe button below and be sure to click the bell for alerts. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope you have a great week. Hope to see you next time. Bye. <music>